So we are going to talk about one application of differential equations in the field of electrical engineering. We're going to look at an RLC circuit, which in this case is a series circuit where we have a resistor of resistance R, a coil of inductance L, and a capacitor of capacitance C, all in series with a voltage source, which might change as a function of time. And I'm not going to go through all the physics and electrical engineering stuff to derive this, but by Kirchhoff's laws, we can actually see that this is described by a particular differential equation, which is L times I prime plus R times I plus one over C times Q equals the voltage function of T. So in this case, I is talking about the current through the entire circuit, and Q is the charge on this capacitor with capacitance C. Now, first, this differential equation might seem a little strange. We know that the voltage value is set at the beginning. So it might be a constant like 5, or it might be some function of t. But we know what this voltage is. The problem is we have current, which is I, and we also have charge, which is q. L, R, and C are constants, but we have two different functions that we're trying to solve for, which is a little bit strange. The important thing that lets us solve this differential equation is by recognizing the relationship between current and charge. When we're looking at a circuit like this, remember that the current is actually the rate of change of charge on this capacitor. The more current goes through the circuit, the more this capacitor is going to get charged up. So I is actually equal to Q prime. And that means that there are two different ways that we can express this differential equation. And I'm going to write them both here. One way we can do this is we can write I prime, for example, as Q double prime, and write this whole differential equation in terms of Q. But we can also write this a different way. If we know that I is the derivative of Q, we can also write that Q is the integral of I with respect to some variable U with the lower bound of 0 and the upper bound of t. Now what this means is that the charge on this capacitor is going to be a function of how much current has gone through this circuit between the times 0 and t, where t is that variable that this differential equation is based on. So we can also write this as L times i prime plus r times i plus 1 over c, and then we write q as the integral from 0 to t of i of u du. And this equals v of t as well. So these are two different ways of writing the same differential equation. And we're not going to solve any of these equations right now, but I'm going to talk about how we can use the different methods in order to solve this. So two potential methods we might use to solve this differential equation are undetermined coefficients and Laplace transforms. Remember that because L, R, and C are constants, we can look at undetermined coefficients and say if V of t is, for example, equal to cosine of t, then we can say, OK, Q is going to equal A cosine t plus B sine t. And then we go through that whole process and solve for Q. The other thing we can do is we can look at the Laplace transform, as long as we can take that transform. And the reason that Laplace transforms are kind of cool in this case is that instead of looking at this second order equation, we can look at the equation in terms of an integral. Because remember that the Laplace transform of the integral from 0 to t of i of u du is one of the identities. You can see the description for the derivation. This is going to equal i of s, the Laplace transform of i, divided by s. So we can actually go through the Laplace transform of this entire equation here. And I'll actually write it down here. We take the Laplace transform of the left side. We're going to get L times, well, the Laplace transform of I prime is S times I of S minus I of 0. And then we have plus R times I of S plus 1 over C I of S over S. And this i of s over s part comes from the integral. This other part is from the Laplace transform of the derivative. Again, you can check the description for that. And this is going to be equal to whatever the Laplace transform of v of t is. So we can go through this whole differential equation 
solve it, and then take the inverse to go back. So that is how we can use our differential equation methods in the case of RLC circuits.